And it's time for my round table discussion. The number of confirmed cases of waterborne disease caused by microscopic parasites has more than doubled. Whilst more than 100 further people have been reported but with similar symptoms of diarrhea. So about 16,000 households and businesses in the Brixham area of Devon have been told not to use their tap water for drinking water without boiling and cooling it first. So how bad is this parasite? And does this ongoing incident show the need for nationalisation of water? Well, joining me now for the roundtable discussion is Dr René Hunderkamp, GP and medical writer, and also I'm joined by the former advisor to the Bank of England and UK Treasury, Roger Gewob. OK, Roger, I'm going to start with you and just tell, tell me what has gone on with this water business? Well, it all began back in 1989 when the water companies were privatized, and they were privatized uh, at an undervalue. Six billion pounds was lost to taxpayers in an instant when they were privatized, and the investors in the companies made a 40 percent return on the first day. So that was deliberate undervaluing of something so that the people investing could make money from it. They made 40 percent in right. a day. Lord Mucky Muck and Baroness Poo Poo, who were given peerages to reward them for this, should be stripped of their titles with all that's gone on now. Uh, who who are Lord then, Mucky Muck? Lord Mucky Muck and Baroness Is that Baroness actually Lord Mucky Muck? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're making it up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write them down. But, I'm going to speak to them about that. But the people who did those privatizations for the government uh, were either incredibly stupid and ignorant or, or, or crooked, in my personal opinion, let me say. Uh, because to do a deal like that, where uh, investors make 40 percent in 24 hours, as alleged, without doing anything. Since then, the water companies have paid 74 billion pounds to their shareholders rather than investing in infrastructure. There has been, uh, the experts allege, no guidelines or supervision. There's nothing wrong with privatizations that would be put in in place of a normal privatization, which aren't there. And we have been crooked, and we're the ones paying the bill. Now, the you know what has hit the fan, mm. or rather the, the, the water, and we're going to have to pay for it. So, the, 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 the effluent has hit the fan, Dr. Rene, and um, what is this disease? So, what's it? Spirigium is a bacteria that's always around. It's not something that's not here, but it doesn't usually affect us too much. Um, we can get it by drinking. From swimming pools or drinking water, although usually our drinking water shouldn't be infected. We can also get it from droplets. People can actually cough it out. So it has a respiratory angle as well. It can give you horrible diarrhea, terrible tummy pains, fever, make you really watery diarrhea, which makes you weak. And in people who are unwell, underweight, young babies, old people, the immunocompromised, it can actually make them seriously ill and can be fatal. There was once an outbreak, um, I think, in Spain where 300,000 people got it and 100 people died. So it can be serious. Mm. Most people will recover. It will be passed out in their faeces for about five weeks. So this oh, wow. will rumble on for a little so while. So five weeks. Is it still infectious then? Is it being so passed So it depends the when they've got it and how long they're passing it for. But this could rumble for a while and obviously it can also transmit person to person because once somebody is infected, if they're coughing, coughing onto things that people touch, children, if they're sharing toys and saliva can pass it on. So it's a really horrible disease. And in a first world country, we should not expect for our water to be contaminated with something as vile as this. Once you've had it once, do you have an immunity to it again? You can get it again. And for some people, when they first get it, especially if they're immunocompromised, they can recover and then find that they're reinfected, that it, they get it back again. Oh, so it's a horrible disease and not one we should experience. But just going to Roger's point, the other problem with the privatisation of water is it was a monopoly, there was no competition. Of course. So there was no incentive for them to fix the pipes or, or sort this kind of thing out because you couldn't say, I've had enough of you, Mr Water Company, I'm going to your neighbour. That's a very important point. These companies that invested were allowed to make higher returns than venture capital and other companies that invest in risky investments, even though these are controlled monopolies with virtually without risk, as you say. Yeah. Well, let me bring in environmental scientist and ecologist Professor Ian Rotherham. Uh, Professor Rotherham, what's your view on the situation that has happened? Because obviously there's faeces in the water, which has clearly caused this situation. What's your thoughts on how the water companies are dealing with it? And how did that stuff get in there in the first place? I think uh, I agree absolutely with what the previous speakers have said. And we're dealing with a long-term lack of investment in infrastructure, a lack of capital investment. And almost, if you pardon the 
component that affects to all. We've got increasing urbanisation. We've got inadequate infrastructure that's often it's um, antiquated. So the sewerage system is growing beyond the capacity of the infrastructure to deal with it. There's not been the investment that's required. And we're also getting extreme weather. So that last year we had a huge amount of water dumped into the system. And we still have this idea that we have storm water overflow. So the sewerage system is not sufficient. And it's, in times of storm, it's acceptable to dump raw sewage through storm water overflows into rivers and ultimately into the sea. It's pretty horrible. I've got a map here of um, the sewage map from the Rivers Trust. And people say, it's scary. It's horrible. It shows you exactly what's going in over the last year where we live. And it's, it's horrible stuff. Now, it seems to me, and I, you know, I have a personal view on this, it isn't necessarily the privatisation as such, except, as we already heard, it's not really privatisation because there's no competition. It was undervalued. But what we're also doing through that, the, the idea, and I, I was involved in advising our local authority in Sheffield back in the 1980s, 1990s on these things, and water privatisation was very, very contentious. But, but the idea was it would bring in new investment, and it's done the opposite. It's, it's sucked our money, our public money, out to uh, distant, remote shareholders and executives who, frankly, are being rewarded for... We're paying them. Your line's a little bit tricky at the moment, but we did get your point, Professor. Thank you so much for your thoughts. That's Professor uh, Ian Rotherham. He's an environmental scientist and ecologist. I think he quite nicely laid out that, didn't he? Uh, what the problem is there and the compounding factors that have made the situation as it is. But the bottom line is, should these people, should water companies, if there's no competition, there cannot be competition in this, should they be allowed to be privatised? You know, there's nothing wrong with privatization. But should they be allowed to water companies specifically? I Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with privatizations. If I were in charge, I used to be a merchant banker in the city. If I were in charge of the privatization, I would make a privatization that had controls and things that would make it run perfectly well. But there's no competition. So what? Well, well, that means that means they don't get a really full price. That means they pay perhaps more than others because they've got a guaranteed income flow that is, is pretty much risk-free. Roger, risk -free. if I don't like the broadband that Sky is delivering to me, I cancel my contract and I go to Virgin or BT or whoever else. Yeah. I can't do that with Thames Water. Sure. I've got no choice. OK, and so you nationalise it instead and you have a bunch of absolutely loony politicians like the nincompoops in every party running this country at the moment. How to get rid of them. Well, that's, but that's not necessarily true. You can get people who know what they're doing to run the company. In fact, you could potentially keep it, it, those... But why, why can't... Yeah, like the government got people to run the post office. Yeah, but the bottom line is there's not a profit incentive. There's Nobody's going to take money and, and the investment has to happen. But, Nana, there's nothing wrong with a profit incentive. I mean, if uh, you... Well, there is when it's water because that's what happens. They don't invest. If you gave this country over to be run by business people, if they would take the job, we wouldn't be where we are today. I promise you, what's wrong with those privatizations was that they were done incompetently or dishonestly, in my personal view. And if they were done right, like the many, many more privatizations around the world that have worked wonderfully to improve, I mean, there were even... But what, aren't we the only country, though, that have our water not run by, um, not owned by the public? I think we're one of we're, the only We're one ones. of the only, and why do you think that is? Uh, simply because of politics, probably, certainly not commercial reasons. It's I would have no problem with an honorable company taking over and running the water supply with the right restrictions on them, I think we'd do better. Rene, final word to you, you've got about 30 seconds. I would like to know that every single patient I have seen, I don't have to consider whether or not the, the water that's coming out of their tap at home yeah. has made them sick. Yeah. I think that is a basic right of people living in a civilised country, mm. and that's not where we are now. All right, thank you very much, Dr Rene Hunterkamp, and also Dr Roger Gewold. Thank you for your thoughts.